I've cleaned up the mating surfaces and uh, the only place I had a nick is on the side here where I slid a screwdriver under to separate the flange from the case. Um, so now it's ready to go back together. While the case is off I had an opportunity to pop this uh, ball and spring out, clean that up, so I'll be reinstalling that with uh, fresh grease. Here's the clutch end. I'll be cleaning this out and I'll uh, wipe the grease off the ball that pushes on the uh, clutch lever and uh, put some fresh grease on there as well. Here I've cleaned it up pretty good and so it's uh, ready to go back together. Here's something I should have made clear earlier. This uh, shaft has a snap ring holding the gears on. There's also cap screws with flat washers holding the outer race of this bearing in. And I suspect there's a snap ring on the <coughs> other end of this uh, shaft because it does not want to come out of that uh, bearing. And then the gear of this shaft also prevents uh, this shaft from coming out. So while the workshop manual that you can download from the BCS website shows these shafts inside the case after the cover is removed on these higher serial numbered uh, tractor the shaft has to stay attached to the cover. It took a, a lot of wiggling things around uh, I did finally get it back together and working. Uh, a couple of the areas I had problems was I had to use a long screwdriver to lift up the bearing and get it into its pocket for the lower shaft there. Uh, and then when I had it together the first time, uh, if I shifted it into high range, it wouldn't quite go there and everything locked up, but in low range everything was turning. I took it partially apart again and found there's a, uh, a couple of gears on the lower shaft next to the cover um, where there's a, I guess you'd call it a dog on one gear that sticks out and goes into a pocket on the other gear and those have to be lined up uh, in order for those gears to come together and then everything will fit up together and both ranges work and the shaft turns freely so it went together with hand pressure and there's just a, uh, two of the nuts are on just so I could uh, test that both ranges work without pushing the uh, cover off. This is the clutch end. I've cleaned everything up and applied fresh grease uh, on the uh, rubbing surfaces and so now it's time to put the disc clutch back in. I think I've got the clutch on uh, correctly now. Uh, there will be a challenge before I put the uh, engine on. I'll have to get all these uh, projections that stick out from the clutch disc lined up so that the slots on the half that's uh, connected to the engine can fit over the outer portion. Now it's time to put some Forma gasket on and install the reverse gear. The reverse gear is on now. Uh, looks like I got pretty good squeeze out all over. I've rotated the clutch and moved the shifter and the range selector and everything's working good. So I'll clean up the squeeze out around the reverse flange like I did uh, the rear cover. Well here's a big setback, don't make this mistake. Um, I've got it assembled to this point and realized uh, I didn't have all my nuts uh, on the cover yet. Uh, and then discovered that this one in the middle on this side, there's not enough room for the nut to go on when the cover's on. That nut has to get started before the cover's all the way on. So now I've got to do some disassembly and hope I can get things back together. I've left a couple of nuts on uh, so I, when I push the cover off it wouldn't go flying off. Uh, it opened up a little bit, hopefully enough to put the 
washer and nut on here. That's success. If it slides together and still works, I'm a happy camper. So far, so good. Good news, I was able to uh, slide the cover back on and tighten up the nuts, uh, just snugged everything up and then uh, tightened things in an alternating pattern and went around several times and everything snug got a little more squeeze out uh, the gears still work properly as do the ranges so I'm happy I cleaned up the squeeze out and I put the PTO lockout on that was tough to get started I had to put some thin oil on and then uh, tap it on with a rubber mallet everything's still working good uh, I think next I'll install the uh, PTO lever there. Here I've got the PTO reassembled, the lever, the articulated joint, uh, I never really disassembled that. The spring and ball are installed there, o-ring, shaft comes through here, there's a, a slider lever for the PTO there. It's installed with a couple of pins and then of course the PTO slider itself. Uh, everything works properly, so looking good. The bracket and the hitch go together like so and then they'll simply drop on four studs on top and over the two studs in the back. Next I'm going to remove this pin, that'll make it easier to put the uh, gear selector on and also before reassembling this uh, ball detent in there uh, I'm going to take a tip from earth tools and shorten my spring a little bit uh, in the case of my tractor it uh, takes a special touch to shift between gears uh, there's generally too much effort required so I'm going to take out less than three sixteenths of an inch uh, or less than one coil probably uh, to shorten the spring and then I'll put the cut end back in the hole and the ball on the good end and hopefully that'll give me the right amount of shift effort both holding it in gear and uh, letting me shift. So after installing some bracing here I was able to drive out the pin and I've shortened up the spring. I probably only took uh, less than an eighth of an inch off. Uh, hopefully it'll work out fine. I packed the uh, hole with grease and installed the spring with the cut end uh, down in the hole and the good end out towards the ball. Put the ball in. Got the shift indicator on. Now I'll install the nuts here and I can then move on to uh, putting in the fork. Talk about not paying attention, I put the hitch on upside down, so uh, got a little bit of rework to do here. Took just a moment and uh, everything's back how it should be. Now the nuts can go on. I've installed the six washers and nuts and driven the pin back in after trying out the shifting. I think I could have taken a little more off the spring, but decided to call it good enough. Next I'll be applying grease where the fork slides there and then putting in the nut and the washers and the pin for the nut. When I disassembled mine I found two of the wavy washers here but it really only needs one so I put it together with one, uh, tightened up the nut backed it off a half a turn like the workshop manual says and installed the pin and now it rotates it's uh, fairly tight but I think it'll work well so here it is assembled 
it is possible to install this PTO lockout or uh, reverse lockout on the uh, wrong side. Don't ask me how I know that, but you're not going to make that mistake. I tightened up the bolt so it was snug and then backed it off just slightly so I could uh, lift the handlebars without lifting the tractor. And there you have it. With the brakes and wheels on, now I think it's time to install the engine. That could be interesting. Uh, I've got a disc clutch on this one so there's flanges sticking out on the disc. Those all need to be lined up to go in these slots on the engine side. The key to getting the clutch lined up and the engine on was developing a good technique. Uh, first I used cable ties on the uh, clutch here to pull on the lever and loosen the disc, disengage the clutch so I could use a thin screwdriver to line up the tabs and uh, then I released the cable ties to lock the clutch in that position because otherwise when the, if the tire moves the clutch gets out of alignment so uh, with that done I then put a jack underneath the tractor to hold it level and put the engine balanced it on a uh, hydraulic floor roller jack so I could roll it up to the tractor get the height and alignment correct and then slide it uh, in so that the clutch pieces came together and then the studs went into the holes <coughs> got three of the nuts started and then uh, just kind of jockeyed it a little bit by hand uh, until uh, all of uh, until it was tight up against the tractor using just hand pressure no tools on the nuts uh, that way I knew I wasn't breaking anything so everything's up tight now I just have to put the other nuts on and tighten them with a wrench and I'll be done with the hardest part. Now I've got the engine on tight and as I finished tightening those nuts I realized I had two of the wavy washers left over instead of a couple of slightly larger flat washers for these control rods so I think what I did was I put the wrong washer on the two studs in the back that attach the hitch. So I'll correct that now and then I can move on to control cables. I've reinstalled the control rods for the shifter and PTO and uh, the shifter is easier to operate. Uh, I, I think perfectly uh, the perfect solution would have been to take a little more off the spring but I'm really happy with it as it is so that's that's great. My clutch cable is torn up here so I'm going to make a repair using some adhesive lined heat shrink tubing. I've already done a similar repair for the brake cable. All of the control cables are installed now and seems to be working other than the uh, brake is dragging a little bit. I think now I'll Put a tiller or chipper on there and try it out.